The first minute of this video needs to hold the same weight as a good fireside lesson between serious history buffs, so let me get straight to it. The Vikings had a home heating method that didn't need open flame, didn't need constant tending, and didn't rely on luck, weather, or huge stockpiles of fuel. It was a design trick built directly into the floor beneath their feet. And if you're into survival history, architectural archaeology, or practical prepping, you'll want to stay through this, because what they figured out still works today. Before we get into the meat of it, make sure you subscribe to The Prepper Historian so you don't miss the deeper dives, the forgotten techniques, and the real ancient methods that can still serve you in a mess. The core of this trick is that the Vikings learned how to bank and redirect residual heat in a way that turned the ground beneath the home into a slow-release thermal battery. While most people think about Viking longhouses as smoke-filled rooms with fires burning non-stop, that's only half of the story. The other half is in what archaeologists call heat retentive flooring, a layered system hidden underfoot that explains why those homes stayed warm long after the fire burned down to nothing. The first thing to understand is that Viking floors weren't simple dirt patches. The base layer was often packed earth, but on top of that came strategically placed stones. These stones weren't random. They were chosen because dense stones absorb heat gradually and give it back just as slowly. Above the stones came a layer of clay mixed with straw, which sealed the gaps and locked the heat in place. Over time, the heat from daily cooking, bodies, lamps and the fire pit would sink into this mass, building up a deep reservoir of warmth that radiated upward hours after the flames died. The next part of the trick was airflow. Viking longhouses were not the drafty wooden shells Hollywood loves to show. They had narrow, directed ventilation paths that prevented heat from escaping too quickly. Cool air entered low, warm air rose and circulated, and the floor absorbed the excess. When the fire was extinguished, the stones released the stored warmth steadily, providing a surprisingly stable indoor temperature even during harsh winters. This is why some excavation sites show longhouses with floors still warm hours after controlled experimental fires were snuffed out. The reason this matters today is that the principle behind it is identical to what we now call thermal mass heating or passive radiant floor heating. If you've ever seen a modern home with radiant tubes under concrete, the Vikings achieved the same effect without metal, plumbing, or electricity. They used physics and smart material choices instead of gadgets. The practical application starts with understanding the order of operations. If someone were to apply this in a modern off-grid cabin, the first step would be building a stable earth base. The second step is arranging a layer of dense stone or brick. The thickness would need to be at least a hand's width to hold a meaningful charge of heat. The third step is sealing it with a clay-heavy mixture that allows heat retention but still handles foot traffic. After that, the interior heat from a wood stove or cook fire will slowly build up in the stone layer. Once you extinguish the fire at night, that stored warmth continues radiating upward like a giant natural heating pad. To take it a step further, some Viking settlements used a heated trench system under the floor. Archaeologists in Iceland have found examples where geothermal vents were used to warm these trenches, but even in non-volcanic regions, people replicated the same structure with controlled airflow from hearths. 
Hot air from the day's fire would pass through rock-lined channels beneath the main floor and heat the stones from below. When the airflow stopped, the stones did the rest. It's the same principle behind a Roman hypercost, but executed with Viking materials and climate in mind. One of the more overlooked details is that Viking homes were built low to the ground. This wasn't sloppy construction, it was strategy. The lower profile reduced wind exposure and made the thermal mass more effective. A taller structure would lose heat quickly, but a low longhouse kept it trapped near floor level, further boosting the warming effect of the stone base. Applying this principle in a modern preparedness setting doesn't require an entire Viking longhouse. A simple root cellar, storm shelter or off-grid workshop can use the same layered floor idea. Even a small emergency hut made from logs or sod can benefit from a compacted base plus a stone layer. In survival scenarios where fuel is limited, using the floor as a passive heat reservoir can drastically reduce your nightly consumption. For example, if someone were building a small winter shelter, they could dig the floor down six inches, lay a tight layer of flat stones, cover it with a clay soil mix, then use a small fire for just an hour or two before sleeping. The floor will stay warm well into the night. Another practical scenario is long-term homestead wintering. If someone builds a small workshop with a stone mass floor, running a stove inside for just part of the day can create enough stored heat to keep tools, materials and water from freezing overnight. The same trick can stabilize indoor humidity and temperature swings which is exactly what the Vikings unintentionally achieved in their own storage rooms. The important thing to take from this technique is that Viking heating wasn't primitive. It was deliberate, efficient and rooted in an understanding of how buildings interact with climate. They weren't just warriors and sailors. They were engineers who built homes that could survive northern winters with minimal fuel. If you found value in this breakdown of the Viking floor trick that made homes warm without fire, make sure you subscribe, share this video with other history-minded preppers, and help keep this channel growing. There are more forgotten techniques coming, and they're worth every minute of your time.